and then e to the minus, and then measurement of jades, and then um, and then the product of all of these, right? Measurement of jade sensor at i minus my measurements of at i squared divided by my variance, uh, two times my variance. Uh, what is the idea? Uh, you are asking me how likely are other guys to be true. So I assume I'm right. If I'm right, uh, then this is the error at uh, this instant uh, i that this sensor is making, right? This is the ten probability density. So product of this, when j goes from 1 to t, is what I think. How likely is the j guy to be right? And of course, this is then quickly, this simplifies to 1 over square root 2 pi vk. And this becomes e to the minus sum of uh, mj minus i, oh sorry, mji minus mki uh, squared divided by uh, 2 vk. Right? Now, then the trustworthiness uh, of the measurements of my sensor will be just the likelihood by all sensors uh, and we uh, uh, aggregate the likelihood just by taking a product so it's product one goes from j to t here will be well or we had already replaced it with some so here of them uh, all sensors uh, uh, j between 1 and n, and then here we have, um, this will be, uh, here this will be uh, taken to the power, so this will be to the power n over 2. Right, so, uh, and then here we will have 2 pi vk to the power n over 2, times e to the, and then this difference squared over 2 vk, so here is m j i summation over j, over, uh, over, over i, and then uh, minus m k i from 1 to t, um, and lo and behold, this should be W of the sensor uh, of the sensor uh, of the sensor K. No, so so this is product with respect to all Ks, and the sensor is J sensor. Right? Of course, and then the weight uh, is equal to Wj divided by the sign of W. So, right? So the idea is uh, you to, to uh, kind of the likelihood of a sensor being true is the likelihood of he being true are given to him by all other sensors. So now you can see if I am close to the readings of other sensors, I will be getting a uh, large weight. Otherwise, I get a small weight. Uh, and lo and behold, it turns out that this function has no poles uh, and no, and it converges really nicely and it's extremely robust to attacks but we don't have time, we will continue this uh, in, uh, on the Fridays. Okay, after, yes? Uh, I just have a question about all of this in general. How will they hold up the 
so, so you have to build louder. Sorry. Um, how well do they hold up if you've only got like five senses or very few senses? Does it just take ages to iterate or does it hold up? No, it actually runs very fast, even okay. with a few senses. So. Where does V come from in this version? Sorry? Where does V come from in this version? Where? V, okay. The V is the estimate from the previous round of iteration. So it's W or a different Yes. Okay. Yes. So if we will look at this uh, once again. OK, after we finish this, uh, we will do recommender systems. And this is extremely important if you go you know, work for a company that does uh, e-business. Uh, after that, we will do power control in uh, telecommunication systems and error correction codes because they are the method is extremely powerful. It's also an iterative method, right? And after that, you will have to vote. We will have to vote. Because uh, we can devote the last about third of the course uh, to introduction to basic signal processing for computer scientists. For example, why JPEG works. Amazingly enough, uh, it works for a spectacularly intuitive and beautiful reason, but uh, uh, in the engineering textbooks, they simply don't say why you use discrete cosine transform and not just uh, discrete Fourier transform. And uh, the core of the algorithm, it pivots the ingenuity of the algorithm is precisely in not using FFT but using uh, the discrete cosine transform and it's uh, really and after that you can I can explain to you what filters are how filters operate on signals so that you can understand how MP3 works and similar things I don't know I have to put it on a boat because it's of course like signal processing is kind of of course you know it's all Fourier transforms and things like that but it's really minimal amount and I would do it totally geometrically. You know, it's so Shannon sampling theorem is simply a picture that says every vector is sum of uh, com its components along coordinate axis. That's all what it says. Huh? You just have to choose these vectors cleverly. So let me see among people present, how many of you would be interested to see brief introduction to signal processing? Wow, big, excellent. Okay, so let's finish this stuff. Uh, this is really important because multimedia is everywhere. Yes? Sorry? More of the stuff from uh, uh, like social networks, uh, maybe, um, you know, some selection of the chapters from the book. So, yeah, but you know, because of the multimedia, and it's absolutely not a rocket science. Uh, it's just, if you do it geometrically, you, once you see it, uh, you will never forget it, because it's just a sequence of pictures. Okay. Uh, you, did you stop it? No. Oh.